attention here, so get going with your notes and everything. All right. So what we're going to do with this is, is you need to know what the identity matrix is, first of all. All right, so if you have a, an identity matrix, we talked about this last time, if you have like a two by two, an identity matrix is the one that looks like this kind of, okay? And you don't have to write this down, this is just something I wanna remind you of. So if you have one, zero, zero, one, that would be a two by two identity matrix. If it's three by three, then it goes one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So you want to know what the identity matrix is, okay? So if I give you two matrices of the same size, if you want to find out if they're inverses, let me show you how you do that first of all. First of all, what we're going to do on this example A is I want you to write this down. Just write down the first matrix <clears throat> the way it is. And then times, we're just going to multiply these together. I'm going to go through how to do that by hand and then the one that follows beyond that, I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. So you can do this by hand, and you can do it by calculator. I want you to know how to do both of these then, okay? So I need to review this. Several of you missed last class, so you're going to have to get caught up on this. This is a 2x2 two two matrix, the first one. The second one is also a 2x2 two two matrix. Remember what we talked about last time is you can only multiply matrices if those two numbers that I highlighted are the same, and they are. Yes? Should that first two be negative? Oh, negative two. I think I tried to write a negative two on there. Are you talking about that? Yeah. yeah, I think I wrote it, but it's not showing up right. Okay, so we can do this. Now, we worked on this a little bit last time. If you missed class, you're going to have to get caught up. That means the answer to this is a two by two. So you look at the inners. If they're the same, you can multiply. The outers gives you the answer. So what you're going to get is you're going to get a two by two matrix. Okay. And then I'm going to show you again and just kind of review how you learned how to multiply this by hand. And I'm going to do the scratch work at the side. You can write the scratch work down if you need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to highlight that. And then that's going to tell you when we do the arithmetic right, that's what tells you what goes there. So what you do is you do three times three, and then you do negative four times two, and then you add the result. And that will tell you what goes in that first element right there. So that's nine minus eight, so a one goes there. Okay, so that's how that goes, all right? So you always start that way. Then what you do, the next thing we do is we still look at this first row, but now we look at the second column and we do exactly the same thing. So we say three times four, and then we say negative four times three. Okay, then we add the result together. Okay, so you're always doing this kind of thing. Once you catch on to it, it's easy to do. You're doing this times this, this times this, and then adding the result. So what's that gonna be? 12 plus negative 12, so what's its result? Zero. Zero, okay, good. So what we have on that is that will tell you what goes in the next spot is going to be a zero like that. Okay, there's nothing to it once you catch on to it. Okay, now we're going to go to this spot. When we do this spot, you have to do row two, column one, because that's where that's located. That's row, located in row two, column one. So I do this. I do negative two times three. Okay, then I do three times two. So what does that look like that's going to be? That's zero also, isn't it? So that's negative six plus six, so that's zero. Okay. Then the last thing we're going to do is we do to get this element here, we do this row times this column. Okay, the math you do is negative 2 times 4, uh, and that was a negative 4, wasn't it? Negative 2 times 4, and then you do 3 times 3, like that. Okay, put that together, that looks, whoops, I think I made a mistake on that somewhere. So that is negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. Okay, then I do... 3 times 3, which is 9, so I did do that, okay, so that's 17, okay? Is that an identity? Yeah. No. No, that's not, that's not an identity matrix. An identity matrix would be what? 1, 1, 0, 0. So the answer is those are not inverses, okay? That's how that goes then, all right? 
So those are not inverses. All right, I'm going to do the next one and see what happens on this. The next one is the identical way. So you just have to follow how I'm doing that multiplication because you want to know how to do this by hand. Okay? So let's do this one the same way. And if you need to write down the steps, then you definitely want to do that on your notes. So the first matrix is 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1. Then we're going to multiply it by the second matrix, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Yeah. Um, but on the... Confused, it's oh, hold on. I just caught something. Yeah, it's not it's that is a smudge. Yeah. <laughs> That's a four right there. Okay. So what I should have done on this is this. I should do negative two times four. I, 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 I just had a negative in there for some <laughs> reason. And then three times three. Okay. So that gives negative eight plus nine. So that's one. So it is an inverse. I did that wrong. I didn't. I had a negative in there for some reason. Okay, so that's an identity. So that is yes. That's an inverse. Okay. All right. If you're having a little trouble seeing what I'm doing over here, again, the idea is what I just did. Is I did to get that element there. You look at row two, column one. So it's negative two times four plus three times three, right okay, like that. Now that is a inverse because you ended up with the identity matrix. Okay. I'll be a little bit more careful on this next one. Okay, so I'm just going to write down the, the math that I do on this thing. Okay, let's just do this one together. Again, what goes here, you're going to do this row and that column. So that's going to be 2 minus 2. 2 times 1, 2 times negative 1 like that. You can do this in your head once you practice this enough. So the first thing is going to be, yes, Yeah, it depends on where you are. So if right now I'm in row one, column one, right? So that means when I get this result, I got to do row one, column one. I match this and this. So I do two times one, two times negative one, and then add them together. When I go to this one, which is row one, column two, then I'm going to go like this. This times this, this times this. Okay? That's why I'm trying to highlight the column, and once you kind of know what you're doing on the multiplication, then it's fine then. Okay? All right, so the first one, I'll just highlight this. So that first one, we're doing 2 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1. Okay? So that looks like that is 4. Uh, whoops, I did the wrong thing there. That is 2 times 1 plus 2 times negative 1. So what's that? 2 minus 2 adds 0, okay? Is this going to be an identity matrix? No. No, it's already done. I'm going to go ahead and finish just because I want to make sure you know how to do this. Next thing we do is row two, row 1, column 1. So if you do this, you would do 2 times 1 plus uh, 2 times negative 1 like that. Is that the same thing? Yeah, they're the same thing, aren't they? So that would be, again, that would be a 0, okay? And then when you do the next one, you're going to go row 1, column 1, like that. So that's negative 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times negative 1. So that's negative 1 plus 1. So that's 0. Looks like we're going to keep getting zeros on this. And then the last one I do is I do negative 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times negative 1 again. So it looks like I get nothing but zeros. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator. Uh, you just have to practice this a little bit and know exactly which elements you're doing. Okay, so the answer to this is it's not an inverse because you didn't end up with the identity matrix. Okay, so get your calculator out. You need to know how to do this by hand and with your calculator. So let's put these in the calculator so I can show you how to do this. Let's do the problem we just did. Okay, so again, what you're going to do on this, you want to be getting to the point where you're pretty comfortable putting matrices in your calculator. So I'm going to go second, x to the negative 1. That's the matrix command like we've learned how to do. We're going to put the first matrix in matrix A. So just go to where it says edit and then press enter. So the first matrix goes in A. What is the size of this matrix? That's a 2 by 2. So you want to change that to a 2 by 2 matrix 
like that, and then put it in. The first matrix is 2, 2, and then negative 1, and negative 1. Okay? So you want to get totally solid that you know how to put matrices in your calculator. All right? Now, what you do is you've got to get into a clear screen. So you have the quit button. So you go second mode to get to a clear screen. Use the quit button and then start over again. Okay? Open up the matrix command. So go second, x to the negative 1. Now go down to go to edit. And then go down to matrix B and do the same thing. Okay, just highlight matrix B, change it to a 2 by 2, and then put the values in. Okay, so the second matrix was 1, 1. Got to press enter after every time you put something in. Negative 1, negative 1 like that. So I think last class, I think everybody seemed like they were doing fine putting matrices in. That's what I was kind of saying. Does anybody have a question about... How that's going in your calculator? If you don't have a TI, you need to get one because, you know, you don't want to do any of this stuff by hand. Okay? All right. Now quit. Go to second mode and quit. Now all you're going to do to do this on your calculator is you do this. You just go back to the matrix. You want to be in a clear screen. You go second matrix, highlight A, and press enter, and that will take you to a clear screen. Press your times button. You can even leave off the times button. Okay? Matrix, you said highlight B. Okay. Well, I highlighted A. I'm going to do oh, A times B. A. Okay. Yeah, so I highlighted A. Okay. Now I'm going to go second matrix, and now I'm going to highlight B like that. That's ultimately what you want to do is get your matrix and your calculator, then in a clear screen do that. Let's see if we did this right or not. Press enter. Look at that. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, so you can do it both ways. When we get into our second exam, I typically like to require you to do one by hand, just to prove to me that you know how to do it. But you'll have a calculator, so you'll be able to tell you're right. You're just going to need to show your steps like I did here. Does that make sense to everybody? And you're going to do a two by two by a two by two, something small. I'm not going to give you gigantic matrices to do by hand, okay? But you want to know both methods to do that then, okay? Okay, so I'm going to let you guys try number one by hand, okay, give it your best shot, and then number two by your TI calculator, okay, so put those in. Now, when you go to number two, you can just type over, and, and you've now got three by three matrices, and you want to see uh, what your result is. If you get an identity for your answer, then it is an inverse. If you don't, it's not an inverse, okay? So again, if you have a 2 by 2, that's the identity matrix. If it's 3 by 3, it's a diagonal of 1s. Everything else is a 0. So you've got to be very clear on what's meant by an identity matrix, okay? So go ahead and work on those. While you're doing that, I'm going to kind of get everything in my calculator on the second one. And just try the first one by hand, see if you know what I'm doing or not. Help each other, too. If, you need, if you're struggling, just get with the person next to you and see if you can get a little help on putting that together. Now, I'm going to, when I'm doing this um, problem, I'm going to try to kind of write the steps out here. So... And then we're going to fill in the boxes here. So if you're still having a little bit of trouble with doing this by hand, the first thing you do is you do this row times that column. So you're going to do negative 5 times 3 plus 2 times negative 5. Okay. Uh, negative 5 times, no, 2 times 8. Whoops. So that's negative 15 plus 16. So that's how you get the 1. And let's see, the second one, the second place, now you're going to do this. You do negative 5 times negative 2 plus 2 times negative 5. That's 10 minus 10, so that's 0. That goes like that. Okay? Right, then you go down to the next thing. You're going to do this row two, column one. 
Okay, you do this, you do negative 8 times 3, and then you do plus 3 times 8. That's negative 24 plus 24, so that's 0. Okay, and then you do the last one, row 2, column 2. Okay, so that's going to be negative 8 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 5. That is 16 minus 15. So that's one. Okay? And see, like, if you're doing, like, a test, and listen up to this, because if I want you to be able to do this by hand, then you just need to write the steps on this. Okay? So, again, when I did that last step, I did this times this, this times this, and added the result. So that is an identity matrix. So that means the answer to the problem is, yes, it is an inverse. Okay? So that's the idea. Okay? Does anybody have a question about what I did by hand? It's not that hard. You just got to know what you're multiplying, okay, and just don't make any mistakes. Okay, the next one, let's see. I put, just did this in my calculator while you were working it on, on it. I put this in, in matrix A, that in matrix B, and then this is what I get. Okay, so the result of this, which you could do on your calculator, is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? Is that an inverse matrix? No. Yes or no? No. Why, why is it not an inverse matrix? It doesn't have a diagonal. That should be a 1. You should have a diagonal of 1. So that's a no. Okay? If you did that by hand, that's what you would get. So you need to be solid on how to do that both ways. So this is not an inverse because of that 0 right there. That's the idea. Okay? All right? Everybody with me okay? Yeah. Two second rows with by how, hand. how do I do what? The second rows by hand. On the second one I did? Yeah, this one. Yeah, the okay. Second rows. Uh, like this row? Yeah. Getting that result? Mm -hmm. Okay, what you would do is you would start with this row and this column. Mm -hmm. That's how you would get this thing. But see, that is in row two, column one. Mm -hmm. So you look at row two, column one. You go zero times one, one times zero, zero times one, and add the result. Okay. That one is in row two, column two. So what you do is you go row two, column two. So it's zero times negative two, one times one, zero times negative one. Does that make sense? It's logical. Okay. That one you're going to do row two, column three, and so forth. That's the idea. Okay. That's how you do it by hand. Okay. You got something, Zach? Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Anybody else have a question about about that? Okay. All right, so let's uh, move here to the next page. Now, these, now when we do an inverse, I'm going to teach you only how to do a two by two by hand. The rest of them we're going to do on the calculator. Okay. So just do these with me on your calculator. Okay. So I want to show you a couple things on this. What you want to do on on this on this first example I have here is just open up your matrix. Command. Now you can put this matrix anywhere you want to. I suggest that what you do is just use different letters on this. I've already got three by threes. You don't have to keep changing them all the time. I'm going to go to matrix C is my choice. So I'm going to go edit and then I'm going to go to matrix C. Okay, I press enter. This is a two by two matrix. So you want to put in the two by two, get it sized. And then just put in the numbers like that. So get your size. The first row is 2. And then you have a 6. Then you have a 3. Then you have a 9 like that. Okay? So we got that. Now here's how you do an inverse. And this is a piece of cake. You'll do this on your next test. There's nothing to it as long as you learn how to use your computer. Okay? So I'm going to go quit. Second mode always gets you to a clear screen. Now, I put this in matrix C, so I go back to my matrix menu, and then I highlight C, and I press Enter. Okay, so you want to get that to come out. Now, when you do an inverse, you will have this, and for the first column, you should have X to the negative 1. The inverse is represented by that negative 1. So just type in X to the negative 1, press Enter, and voila, out will come your inverse. Okay? Now, it's an error, and I'm going to explain why that is, because that will happen sometimes. I'm going to explain in just a minute what we mean by 
this not having an inverse. So this one is going to be called a singular matrix. I'll explain how you can spot this in your head in just a minute. Okay, so what that means is it means there is no inverse. Kind of like the problems I had you do a few minutes ago, sometimes you, some, a matrix doesn't have to have an inverse. Okay, all right, so here's how you can spot this. Okay, here's how you can do this. It's real simple, it turns out. All you do is you look at the diagonals. If you do 2 times 9, and if you go the other way, 3 times 6, aren't those both equal? Okay, anytime that happens, that's what your calculator is going to give you. Okay, it's impossible to get an inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix if the diagonals are the same when you multiply them. That's how you can spot that, okay? That's the idea. Okay? How about this one? Okay, look at this. 3 times 3 is 9. 0 times 0 is 0, so that's not a singular matrix. Put that one in your calculator. Just type over C and put that in. And now let's see what we get on that. So if you got matrix C set up, then you should be able to just type over it then. I'm just going to quit that. But if you get that singular message, that's why that is then. Okay, so I'll go second matrix, uh, highlight C, uh, row 3, and then just put in the negative 1. That's ultimately what you're trying to do. Oh, I didn't even type over it. i got to change my matrix, okay? So I need to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Yeah, so just type over um, what we had. We had a 2 by 2 still. And let's see, this one is 3, 0. 0, 3, are you getting an answer on this one? Is it giving you a matrix? Mm -hmm. okay, I think it will. Okay, so I've got the matrix in. Clear screen. Okay, and get to, again, back to the matrix command. Highlight 3. You can just press number 3 and it will come out. And then put the negative 1. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, you get a bunch of decimals, okay, which is okay. So what this means is we would say the inverse of this, I'm just going to abbreviate the inverse is, that's actually a third, or you could round that off, zero, zero, and a third. When you have a bunch of repeating threes, that's a one-third. So that's what comes out on your calculator. That's the inverse of that matrix. Yes? It means that the matrix yeah. Okay, what you do, you, once you get the matrix in, if you're doing the inverse, press your inverse button, this is x negative 1, and then press enter. So once you get your matrix in, all you've got to do is press, get that coming on a clear screen, and then press x negative 1, and it'll work it out. Yeah. So you enter, like, the dimensions of the matrix, and yep. then plug in the numbers, Yep. and then what's the third step? Uh, just in case, is that, is quit. That you want to get to a clear screen. Yeah. Quit, and then just go to your matrix, highlight C, press enter, and then press your X negative 1 button. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. So if you want to edit it, you've got to go over to edit. Okay. Because if you want to change anything, that's when you put everything in. So you go edit. Now you've got your matrix in. Good. So quit. That quit button takes you to a clear screen. Now go back to the matrix command and just get that to come out. Okay, now there's your inverse button, x, negative 1, press enter, and that's how you get that. Oh, what do you mean? Just like yeah, it? right there. Mm -hmm. X, negative 1. Right yeah, that's how you get the inverse, okay? All right, is that working okay for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes? When do you know that you have to put the negative 1? How do you know if you have to put it? That's the symbolism for an inverse, okay? So when we write an inverse, you're usually going to write an inverse like that, like matrix A inverse. So that's how you know that. That's the symbolism for that. Okay? Okay, try the next one. Do the next one. Okay, just go to you, find you a matrix. This is a 3x3. Three three. Put it in and let's see how we do. Yeah? For the 3x3, three three, does the uh, diagonal check thing to see if it's a singular still work? No. Oh, okay. That only works on a 2x2. Two two. Okay, Okay, so if you've already got a 3x3, three three, like I see, I've already got a couple of 3x3s. Three threes. You can put it in any matrix you want to. So I've already got a 3x3. Three three. I'm just going to type over matrix A. That's your call on that. So let's go negative 5, negative 2, negative 2. Just get everything put in. And then 2, 1, 0. 
and 101. And as long as you get everything in there, the calculator is not going to do you wrong. I think I missed something there. So I think I'm good. So again, once you get your matrix put in, quit button takes you to a clear screen. So you can go second mode, clear screen. You can wipe off whatever's there and just go back to matrix, highlight your matrix, and just press enter. And then put your negative one. So that's ultimately what you got to do is get your matrix in and get that to come out in your calculator. So I'll see if you get what I get. Okay. What do you think? Is that what we're getting? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we'd have on this then is the inverse on this. Just write down what that inverse is. It would be 1, 2, 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. Okay, so that's your inverse. Okay, so as long as you get everything put in, you're going to be fine. So I want to show you this one other thing. I want you to do this with me because this is kind of what we're trying to learn how to do. So I want you to, we already got this. This is in my matrix A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you do this. Um, we're going to go through and put in this first matrix A, just put in, I think we already have that in there. That's already in my calculator. So if it isn't, you want to put uh, that in matrix A. So you just want to edit over and do this. What I want you to do is put this in matrix A in your calculator and then put the inverse in matrix B. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'll just make sure you got matrix A, the first one, and then go to matrix B and put the inverse in. That's the answer we got on the previous problem. And it should be able, if it's already sized, just type over it. So let's see, one, two, two, and let's say negative two, negative three, negative four. And then the last row is negative one, negative two, negative one. Okay, so I think I got everything in here. Now what I want you to do is once you get this in matrix A and that in matrix B, then I want you to multiply those two so I can show you what happens. Okay, I hope you already know, but I don't know if you do or not. So I'm going to go to quit and I'm just going to do this. I've got them in, so I'm going to go matrix A, press enter. You can leave off the time sign if you do that. You're going to have to put that in. Then go back to matrix, then put in matrix B, and do that. Okay? What do you think is going to happen? You're going to get what? You get that identity. Okay? That's the point that I want to make sure you understand, is when you multiply a matrix by its invert, by its inverse, you get that identity matrix. So that's how you know you're right on that. Okay, that's what's going on with that. Okay? So see, most of this stuff, we're gonna, you're going to do inverses on your calculator. I'm not going to show you how to do anything other than a 2x2. Two two. There's a simple formula for doing a 2x2 a two two on your, uh, for uh, doing an inverse. Okay, next thing I want to show you is, um, I've already shown you this diagonal thing. So... This is how you can tell on a 2x2, two two, and this is only for a 2x2 two two, if the matrix doesn't exist, okay? First of all, the matrix has to be square. What do I mean by square? 1x1, one 2x2, one, 3x3. Two two, three three. Inverses are only square matrices. They can't be any other size, okay? So you've got that. If you contain a row of zeros, then it doesn't have an inverse, okay? So you just look for that. And then I showed you this on a 2x2. Two two. If you do this diagonal, A times D, and then if you do B times C, they're going to be equal, or if you just subtract those, you'll get zero. So anytime that happens, your, your calculator would give you an error if you tried to do the inverse. Okay, so it must be square. It can't contain a row of zeros or a column of zeros. can't have a column of zeros either. And then the diagonals can't be equal on a 2 by 2 okay? So this is what I want you to do real quick and be able to spot this, okay? All right, does this matrix have an inverse, yes or no? No. No, how come? It's not square. It's not square. What is the size of that? <coughs> 1 by 3. It's got one row and three columns. No inverse on that. How about this one? No. Yes or no? No. No, what's wrong? Row of zeros. Row of zeros. No dice, okay? 
How about this one? Diagonal. Problem with the diagonals. 16, 16, none of those have an inverse. Okay, those are the reasons why on this. Okay, so this one is not square. All right, this next one has a row of zeros. I think you spell square like that. Uh, no row of zeros. Just kind of give the reason. And then the last one, you could just say 2 times 8 minus 4 times 4 is equal to 16 minus 16, so that's 0. Okay? So you can tell a lot of times if something has an inverse or not. The reason we're learning about inverse is because we're going to learn how to do what we call a matrix equation today in the next section. So that's the idea. Okay? All right, so I'm going to show you how to do a 2 by 2 matrix with a simple formula. When you get into your second test, this would be a formula that you would want to write down and make sure that you know how to do them. Okay? So if you have a 2 by 2 matrix, then you find the inverse by doing this. Okay? And I'll explain this on the next page. What you do is you kind of change the, the things around here. So you see the AD... You just flip-flop it, BA. Okay, the BC, you don't flip-flop it, but you change the signs that way. So that changes, that becomes that. Now, what D is, D is when you do A times D minus BC, so that's going to be multiplied through the <coughs> matrix. Okay, now on the next page, I'm just going to show you how this formula works. You don't have to memorize that formula. You can bring that into the test, but you need to know how to do that. And that only works for a 2 by 2 matrix, okay? So if you follow the formula, there's nothing to it, all right? So let's do uh, this one together using the formula, find the inverse. You know how to do that on your calculator now. So what you want to do on this, first of all, step one is to find what D is. So D just means you take the diagonals like this, and you've got to go in this order like this. So you've got to go this direction, so that you're going to do negative 4 times 4 minus, and then do it the other way, do 3 times negative 5. Okay, so that'll be negative 16 plus 15, so that's negative 1. Always do it in that order, don't get it backwards. So it's kind of going that one, and then that one like that. Okay, that's what D is defined to be. That's, it stands for what's called a de determinant. We don't learn anything about determinants in finite math, okay, but that's what that is, okay? Now, here's how you put this whole thing together. Just do exactly what the formula tells you to do. So we're going to do 1 over D. So what's D? D is negative 1. So you do 1 over negative 1. And then this is what you got to remember is you just do this. Okay, according to the formula, these things get changed. Okay, so this thing's going to go backwards. You're going to put 4, negative 4. So you want to go 4, negative 4 there. And then this diagonal, the signs change. That's what the saying on that. Okay, so when you do this, these two things right here go backwards. Okay, that I'm highlighting. So that'll go 4, negative 4. And then these things change the sign. So that'll be negative 3, positive 5 like that. Okay? So that's how you set that up. So what you would end up having then is the value of D, of course, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. And then what you do is you just multiply each term by that D. And you do this in your head. Okay? I'm just doing... I'm going to go ahead and write down what I'm doing, but you don't have to do this. I'm doing negative 1 times 4, negative 1 times negative 3, negative 1 times 5, and then negative 1 times negative 4. Okay? So the inverse on this is going to be negative 4, positive 3, negative 5, positive 4. Okay? You just do what the formula tells you to do. I'm not going to show you where that comes from. So the inverse of yeah, you can have that too. Oh. You can. Okay? There are times when an inverse can be exactly the same thing. Doesn't have to be, but it could be. Okay? So that's the idea. 
All right, so let's see. I did the, I've got the, the 1 over D. I got that, and then I did exactly what the formula told me to do. That's how that goes, okay? Well, let's see if I got this right. Let's go to a, let's just put this in the calculator and see if this works okay. So I'm going to go to, um, you know, I, get you a 2 by 2 matrix and just put in the original problem. Now let's see if I did this right. Okay, so I'm going to go down to matrix C and I'll put in the numbers on this problem. So it looks like I have negative 4, 3, negative 5, and 4. And just do that and see if we do get the same thing. There are times when, I'm, when it will be the same thing. So I've got negative 4, 3, negative 5, 4. Okay, then again what I'll do is in a clear screen I just put matrix C to the negative 1 power. My God, we're right. Okay, who would have thought? Okay, well, that's how you do a 2 by 2. So what I want you to do on inverse is the only one I want you to do by hand is the 2 by 2 by that formula, but you'll have the ability to check your answer on a calculator. Okay, yes? So which of these is the inverse? Like which one is the The result right here. It turned out that it was the same. See, the idea is this is your inverse. That's the original matrix. It just happened that they're the same. That doesn't always okay. happen. That happens once out of every, I don't know how many times, but it can happen. Most of the time it doesn't happen, okay? So that's the idea, all right? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to let you all do these problems just on this page to finish up, then we'll take a break. So I want you to do on uh, the first four, just yes or no, Is does, does that matrix have an inverse? By the rules I told you, remember it's got to be a square matrix. The diagonals can't be the same when you multiply, and no row of zeros. Okay, that's all you look at, and then try to do that last one with the formula. I wrote the formula down there, and just see if you can get that all put together then. Okay, real quick, and make sure we got that okay. All right, uh, part A, yes or no? Does, is that going to have an inverse? No, what's the reason? Row of, zeros. Row of zeros. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about why that is in that class. How about the next one? Yes or no? No. No. How come? Diagonals, Diagonals are the same, right? So you have six times eight. It, that's the same as twelve times four. They can't be the same. Okay, they're both forty-eight. So that's a no. How about the next one? Yes. That looks like a yes. Everything looks cool on that. And how about D? No, what is the reason why? Not it's not square. Okay, yes? Uh, what's wrong with C? Or like how come it uh, is yes? It doesn't violate any of the rules, okay? There's no row of zeros. Look at the diagonal, 4 and 6, right? So that's not a problem. Oh, yeah, and it's I, square. Okay, it's so that's a good one. Okay. That one so will so have an inverse. It has to be a square, has to be a square matrix, okay? okay. If it isn't square, then there's no there's no inverse. Okay, all right. Let's see if we did this one right. Uh, so first of all, when you do D, you're going to do one times four. You go that way, and then you do two times three, and then you subtract. Okay, so that's the value of what we call the determinant. So that's four minus six. So you should have got D as negative two. Okay. So when we do the inverse on this, we will have 1 over D. So D is negative 2. So we'll have that. All right. Then it's real simple. What we do is the formula tells you to do this. This diagonal 1 and 4, you just switch it to 4 and 1. The other diagonal, the signs become opposite. So that'll be negative 2, negative 3. So you find D. And then you change A and D, and then you do, do negatives. Now, all you're going to do to wrap this thing up is just multiply negative one-half through each of those four numbers. So I'm just going to write this as negative one-half times four. You can use a decimal if you want to. Neg negative one-half times negative two. And then negative one-half times negative three. And then negative one-half times one. Okay, if you do the details on that correctly, then you got your inverse, okay? So what would happen is this first one would be negative 4 over 2. 
which you can reduce. The next one would be 2 over 2. You multiply fractions straight across. The next one would be 3 over 2. And then the last one would be negative 1 half. Okay? So what you would get is your inverse would be negative 2, 1, 3 over 2. Leave that alone, or you can do a decimal, and then negative 1 half. So that is the inverse matrix. And if you do that on the calculator, you would just get decimals on that. So that's how that goes. Does that make sense? If you know the formula, there's nothing to it. You just do what the formula tells you to do. Okay? Questions? Okay, five-minute break. I'll wrap us up with that, and we'll come back, and we'll do the last section in Chapter 4.